Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're comparing the three X 3D chips that now exist on the AM4 platform. The Ryzen 5 5600X3D, Ryzen 7 5700X3D, and then of course the Ryzen 7 5800X3D. Now technically most of you will only have access to the Ryzen 7 models as the 5600X3D is a micro center exclusive that can currently be had for just $200 US, though it has been available in some pretty incredible combo deals in the past. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their CryoSheet Graphene Thermal Pads, which are an excellent alternative to thermal pastes. They offer very high thermal conductivity with no liquid components, so they can't dry out and therefore don't degrade over time like pastes and even liquid metals. CryoSheet is very easy to use, it's extremely durable, and is available in a range of sizes to suit most applications. I've personally done some high-end GPU testing with CryoSheet, and the results were impressive, very similar in fact to that of liquid metal, but without the mess, and of course, no risk of drying out. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Then we have the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D, which can be had for $250 US, that's the MSRP, and it is available worldwide, along with the $300 US 5800X 3D. Now, a number of presumably US-based viewers who have access to all three parts have requested it that we compare all of them to see which model offers the best value, specifically for gaming. So that's what we'll be doing today. As a side note, for those of you not interested in gaming, there's a good chance that you don't actually require a 3D V cache enabled processor and instead are best off just looking at a base model. But for gaming, especially more CPU limited gaming, the X3D parts are amazing and models such as the newly released 5700X3D offer AM4 owners a quick and easy upgrade that can net them substantially higher frame rates. So for testing, we will be focusing on CPU limited gaming as we are evaluating CPU performance, not system or GPU performance. And this isn't done in an effort to convince you to upgrade, rather that's for you to work out for yourself, is your current CPU limiting your gaming performance? And there are a number of ways to determine this. For example, monitoring GPU load while gaming or checking to see if frame rates increase as you lower the resolution. Now, the idea of CPU limited testing is to show you what the real performance differences are between two products. There's no point GPU limiting the Ryzen 5 3600 and Ryzen 7 5700X 3D with a GeForce RTX 3060, as that'll likely lead to 100% GPU limited testing, and obviously both CPUs will deliver the same levels of performance under those conditions. And this completely hides the fact that when CPU limited, the 5700X3D is 50% faster on average than the Ryzen 5 3600. And this might not necessarily make the 5700X3D better value than the 3600, but at least you can correctly evaluate the value of each product when you know what the real performance differences are. Anyway, I have a video that goes in depth on this topic. So if you wanna learn more, I'll link that in the video description. For now, let's dive into the benchmarks to see how these CPUs compare. First up, we have Baldur's Gate 3, and here all three AM4 X3D processors deliver similar performance at around 130 FPS. And despite having two fewer cores, the 5600X3D was able to match the eight core variants, and the higher core clock certainly helped it keep pace with the 5700X3D. When compared to the non 3D Vcache models, we saw a 25 to 30% performance uplift, with the 5600X3D offering the biggest gain over its standard variant. Also, for those of you using something like a Ryzen 5 3600, the 3D Vcache models on the AM4 platform offer over a 60% performance uplift in this title. Next up, we have Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, which is a little more CPU intensive, and while it doesn't max out the 6-core 5600X3D, we still do see some performance benefit with the 8-core models. The 5700X3D, for example, was 3% faster than the 5600X3D, while the 5800X3D was 7% faster. And this time we're looking at a 22 to 26% performance improvement for the X3D models over their standard variants. The 5600X3D was also 56% faster than the Ryzen 5 3600, so a big upgrade on offer here for those of you still using the older third gen Ryzen 5 model. Hogwarts Legacy is a very CPU limited game, though this is mostly due to poor optimization, unfortunately, 
And as a result, the X3D models aren't utilized as well as they could be, and nor are the eight core processors. The 5600X3D, for example, was slightly faster than the 5700X3D, simply because it clocks a little bit higher, meaning that although performance is heavily CPU limited when using the 5700X3D, the extra cores sadly aren't being utilized. Moving on to Star Wars Jedi Survivor, we find more of the same really. The 5600X3D is able to match the 5700X3D and 5800X3D, so all three models delivered comparable performance. That said, the 5600X3D did lag behind the 5700X3D when looking at the 1% lows, so it's interesting to see that when increasing processing efficiency with the larger L3 cache, that does help to mitigate a lack of cores. Then when compared to the standard models, the X3D chips are offering between 23 and 29% greater performance. ACC is another game that's often CPU limited, but not in the sense that it fully utilizes high core count CPUs. Rather, like the vast majority of modern games, it is still primary thread dependent. And as a result, the 5600X3D performs very well and is able to match the 5800X3D, making it 6% faster than the 5700X3D, purely because it clocks a bit higher. The game is cache sensitive though, and as a result, the 3D V cache models are around 40% faster. You're also looking at an almost 80% performance uplift from the Ryzen 5 3600 to the 5600X3D. Next up, we have Spider-Man Remastered, and this title can benefit from the extra cores, depending on what the base CPU performance is. In the case of Zen 3, we're looking at a mere 4% uplift from the 5800X versus the 5600X, and then a 7% increase from the 5600X3D to the 5800X3D. By far the biggest gains, though, come from an increased L3 cache capacity, with the X3D chips offering up to 23% more performance. The results in A Plague Tale Requiem are interesting as here the 5700X3D struggles to outperform the standard 5700X as it would appear as though clock speed is the primary limitation. The 5600X3D though is 15% faster than its non-3D variant, while the 5800X3D is 12% faster than the 5800X. This also meant, due to its higher operating frequency, the 5600X3D was slightly faster than the 5700X3D in this title. Moving on to Assassin's Creed Mirage, here we have a title that does favour the 5800X3D over the 5600X3D, handing the 8-core model a 12% performance advantage, though the 1% lows were still quite comparable. The 5700X3D was also able to beat the higher clocked 5600X3D, though only by a 4% margin. Now, when compared to the base models, the X3D variants were generally around 30% faster, so a good uplift there. And then we see that the 5600X3D was also 56% faster than the Ryzen 5 3600. Performance in Watch Dogs Legion is pretty consistent across the Zen 3 parts. You're looking at around 155 FPS on average with the X3D models, or 116 FPS with the standard models, so just over a 30% boost there with the 3D V cache. The 5600X3D was also 68% faster than the Ryzen 5 3600, and slightly faster than the newer Ryzen 5 7600X. Last up we have Hitman 3, and as we've seen time and time again, core count for these Zen 3 processors doesn't appear to matter. Cache capacity and clock speeds on the other hand are far more important when it comes to FPS performance. For example, the 5600X3D matched the performance of the 5800X3D almost exactly, making it 17% faster than the standard 5800X, or 30% faster when comparing 1% lows. Okay, so here's the 12 game average data, and as you'd probably expect, based on what we just saw, the 5600X3D is able to match the 5700X3D and 5800X3D. Technically, it is 2% faster than the 5700X3D, and then 3% slower than the 5800X3D, so really the same level of performance. Now, for those of you still running a part like the Ryzen 5 3600, the newly released 5700X3D will offer around 50% more gaming performance, when CPU limited of course, so that's pretty incredible for $250 US. It's also worth noting that the 5700X3D, along with the 5600X3D and 5800X3D, were on par with the Ryzen 5 7600X, and although the newer AM5 processor is slightly cheaper, the memory and motherboard will cost more. Therefore, if you want to receive a noteworthy upgrade from the AM4 X3D chips with 
AM5, you really need to opt for the much more expensive 7800X 3D, which was on average 31% faster than the 5800X 3D. In terms of value, the 5600X 3D is pretty hard to beat at $200, given that it basically matched or even edged out the 5700X 3D in all of our gaming tests. The 5700X 3D does cost around 25% more, and it came nowhere near delivering that kind of performance gain. The problem is though, this six core version, it's a micro center exclusive. So that means most of you won't have access to it. So the fact that it's pretty great value, that'll just be annoying. That said, you are getting 33% more cores with the 5700X 3D for just $50 more. Again, it's a 25% price increase. And while that didn't prove particularly useful in the gaming tests, this model will surely age better. In any case, it's the cheapest X3D processor most of you will have access to, and at $250 US, I think it's a pretty great deal. And again, that is for people who are already invested in the AM4 platform. The 5800X3D, which is essentially the same CPU, but with a clock speed advantage, it costs 20% more and offers just 5% more performance on average, so naturally, you'd just be best off buying the 5700X3D. It's also an excellent option for those of you running a Zen 3 or older CPU, as we saw on average a 52% increase over the Ryzen 5 3600, and that's a significant performance increase that's well worth $250 US, again for AM4 owners, who are CPU limited of course. And as a side note, you're also getting Ryzen 7 7600X Lite performance without having to spend big money on an AM5 motherboard and DDR5 memory. Anyway, you now know how the 5600X 3D, 5700X 3D, and 5800X 3D compare in today's games, and I'm glad that is the last time, at least for this video, that I have to say X 3D. So anyway, hopefully this video satisfies those of you who requested this content, and if it did, check us out on Floatplane Patreon if you haven't already, because you'll get some pretty cool perks there, and we do Q&As, live streams, behind the scenes content, Discord server. Cool stuff there, check it out if you're interested, but if not, that is perfectly fine, and I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.